So our task this week is going to be the combining of two figures, uh, an actor putting on a costume and a seamstress mending, repairing that costume. So I'm going to show you a way uh, that you could do this. I'm going to use some uh, thick stick of charcoal, a thin stick of willow charcoal and an eraser. And I'm going to begin with the uh, actor in her wardrobe setting. And I'm using the side of the charcoal to put down a fairly, a fairly crude, simple shape to represent that pose. I think by using the side of the charcoal, it's easy to get down a kind of silhouette. That simple silhouette shape is easy to change. So I can just pick up on things like it's rather nice the way our actor's head is turned away. But I'm not going to get into any great detail yet because I'm not ready for that. I want to just get the basic shape. Some of these angles, she's leaning back slightly, turned away. The feet are at different heights. So I just want to get that posture without, as I say, getting into too much detail. And the reason why I don't want to get into too much detail is until I've combined these two figures, uh, it's only just going to cause me trouble if I get too detailed. So that's as far as I want to go with the first figure. I'll set up now for the seamstress. So here's the seamstress, and I'm going to put her sitting behind the actor. I want to be sure that these hands, which I've worked hard on learning how to draw, I want to be sure that these hands feature. So I think probably her hands might be about there. And again, a simple starting shape, hand there. So because I've, I'm now combining two figures, there's a number of issues that I want to resolve. Firstly, so the position. So I've decided she's going to be sitting behind. So her head is much lower. She's sitting down. I want to get her in a position where she can work with the garment of the standing figure. And I also want her to be you know, in proportion with herself. So I might just, I might even give her a skirt. It might make my life easier. Um, so again, putting down a shape, which I'm going to adjust. Now there are extra complications, of course, because our seamstress actually had a, a kind of long wedding dress um, train. But I think for my composition here, I think she's going to work with part of the, the costume that the actor was wearing, the standing figure. So I'm going to continue to adjust this a bit before I go back to the standing figure. Again, the point being, if, if I get too caught up in everything's gone very dark sorry if i get too caught up in parts of this you know one figure or the other then i lose the very important ability to change things so that they work together so i don't really want to favor one figure over another until I've got the you know the, the, the pair of them working. I'm sorry it's going very dark in the studio and so 
let me just put on the light. Sorry, I think it's comp the camera's compensating for the, the illuminated screen. So I'm just going to make a few more changes to the basic shape of my seated figure. And then I'll start to put in a few more definite marks. Uh, and she's maybe she needs a chair as well. So that she can do that. Okay, so I think I should get down to her feet as well. Things at a different angle. Right, so I'm going to go back to the actor and I'm going to put in a few more marks to start to define that figure a little bit more. Because I think it's beginning to work. Um, but I, I think I need now a little bit more information in the two figures to confirm that that is that the two are working together in a convincing way. So having worked with the thick stick of charcoal, I'm now going to put on some lines with the thinner stick. And I'm aware when I compare my photographic reference with my charcoal shape, she's not leaning back quite enough. So I think I'm going to make some changes to that charcoal shape which take account of that. So I think it's good to, to illustrate the fact that I'm not just running a line around the initial, initial loose shape that I drew. I'm actually, well, you could say correcting it. I'm adjusting it, at least. And I've got this new dimension that I, that I want that, I've got to imagine this a bit, how that very patterned, cloak could be uh, um, how it would fall uh, if it were lifted and I think because I don't want to make too many things up she's going to have another long layer underneath so I don't have to pretend that bit but I do know where her feet are there we go so I like that figure let's see if I can do the same to the seamstress So I won't begin with the hands. I think I'll begin with the shoulder, the head and the shoulder because I feel like they will give me a better, a better indication that these figures are working together. Now it's one of those um, twin sisters working together scenarios. I could always give one or other of them a different hairstyle. But I'm just sticking with this for now. So there we go. There's the head. And I, certainly I find that helpful. I think that head and the shape of the rest of the figure are beginning to be convincing. But I, I'll always be ready to adjust things if it isn't the case. And we did have some fabulous poses from Cromacci with her first fingers standing out or her little finger. You know, some of these very convincing gestures for the seamstress. And I do want to make the hands as convincing as possible. So that, I'm happy with that. I am a little bit challenged down here because I've got to make it up. And I think I'd start maybe with a a wide skirt, so something like that. So that's my two figures. Um, seamstress and actor, make some adjustments there so the actor's head really goes back. And then finally, I might just go back to the actor image so that I can get a little bit of a setting. So while we're about it, why not have a setting? So what was wonderful about being in this, you know, real uh, wardrobe warehouse of the Lyceum is we were surrounded by all sorts of racks of garments, 
and props and things. So I think that'll that'll work quite nicely. It's good, I think, that it was the end of the, the line of suits. And also some of the suits are grey and some of them are black. So I might just, you know, put something like that in as a, a setting. I'm trying to find some kind of pattern and maybe even uh, a certain amount of sort of tonal variation. So there's a charcoal study combining the two figures, uh, a way which allows me to make adjustments from one to the other and bring together two figures that were not actually together at any one time. I'll try another one quickly to, for variation. A different possibility would be to combine two figures in the same composition, but not actually have them touching or, yeah, not, not, not touching or the, uh, and connect them by having them in the same space, in the same frame. So for this, I'm going to have this spectacular standing figure, fairly large in the foreground. And then I'm going to sit a seamstress at a table in the background. There's my first figure. So my plan had been to sit the seamstress at a table in the background bit like this. Again, just putting down the tonal shapes, nothing too nothing too fixed, and a table, something like that. She could be in the background. So that's a possibility, but I wondered, would it be more exciting to change those scales and actually have a very large seamstress in the foreground here with her stuff on the table like that. And then the model in the background, the um, the actor in the background. So I'll make some adjustments to those and see how they work. So a little bit more to the seamstress. Again, stressing, I haven't gone too far because I want to bring these figures along together. So a bit more to the actor. And I think that helps. And I think what would really help now would be some sort of background, maybe just some windows for the time being. Not that I can tell you from my daughter's experience, not that seamstresses ever work in rooms with windows, certainly not. Anyway, there we go. A little bit of setting helps bring them together and then I would do a last few adjustments, maybe this time the line. We've been interested in hands, so again, wonderful poses from Camachi that have some very expressive hands. And of course, where this table and this material overlaps with the figure in the background, that'll help push the background figure back. And finally, I'll come back to a few, a few lines, a few bits of definition to the seamstress. So there's a couple of examples of combining the figures, starting very loosely with charcoal shapes so that there's plenty of scope to make changes 
in order to bring the two figures together. And then from that, uh, we'll then go on to make an oil study. So you may do some preparation in advance, or you can do this in the studio on Monday.